couple more breaths in child's pose, Mary. There you go. If you haven't rolled your forehead back and forth, and just so you know, my, my camera's okay now. If you haven't rolled your forehead back and forth, just go ahead and do that now. And, you know, self-massage. We can't give ourselves, uh, we can't get massages right now, so let's find little ways to just take the tension away. Wiggling your hips back, pressing with your fingers so your hips are moving back towards your heels. And then gently come on up into tabletop. So good. And thank you again for your beautiful patience. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> and just rock from side to side, finding some C curves. It's Monday. Gentle. I was so happy when I got to do a gentle class on Monday because I just don't want to hit it real hard on Mondays. I want to ease into my week and just bring joy and kindful movements. And then just come into your cows and your cats. So your belly drops, but keep the navel active, protecting your back. So the core protects the back. And I'm sorry about the lawnmower. Hopefully that won't last very long. So always keeping the core to protect the back because you want to think about it. When we're stretching in yoga and doing all these poses that strengthen our posture, we're not cranking our bones. We're not cranking our back. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to mute because I have a lot of traffic noise. So I'm just so you don't have to. I'm not hearing it. Oh, okay. Then I'll leave it. Yeah. No, we're good. And it's just us. No problem. I like to hear your feedback. So, so the idea is that we're strengthening the muscle supporting the spine so it's holding the bones it's supporting not just you know cranking the bones right so always think about bringing in that navel and working on that core even when we drop the belly and relax just kind of give that navel a check and then through cat just press that navel up so your spine is extending with the muscles wrapping all around it feel the breath opening up in the back of your your shoulder blades separating Taking in a big breath here, just exploring cat. Now your, your lungs, the largest space for your lungs is in your back. So visualize just the healthy lung space back there and open up, take a deep breath. And then exhale with your mouth open. And then come in to cow again. And just relax and move through here. Maybe you move it into your shoulders and just wiggle around. It's just us, have fun. And then this time, take your left leg back and just press it back with the toes. And let's go ahead. It's a gentle class, but let's make sure we got the core and bring, fire it up all the way back from that left buttock, right? Your glutes. Fire up that leg, pressing back with the hands. Feel the energy across the chest, in the arms. So one of the longevity indicators is strong upper body, right? And what's that? That's heart and lungs. So when we always take an opportunity to open up their shoulders and really bring strength up into the upper body, that way you press the heel back and then just fire up that glute a little bit. If you want to lift that heel up, go ahead. Lift it up, square the hips, and then place it back down and press those toes back again. And then let's lift it up one more time. Maybe flex and point the feet this time. Just lift it straight back. Straight back. Good, 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 good. I'm going to... Yeah, beautiful alignment, there you go. And then just press with the hips straight and with control, just tap that foot down. Let's do that five times. Up, down with core, with square hips, good. Three, beautiful dog. <laughs> five, and then just press it back again and take your hand with your hands, just press back. So that you're getting a nice toe stretch here. Now let's go ahead and lift that leg up. Maybe bend it. Maybe stack your hips here a little. Wiggle the foot. Then straighten it back up. And then take that knee behind, right? And we're going to do this nice little stretch here. And just gently lowering 
See if you can wiggle in between, getting a nice hip opener here. So wherever it takes you, if you've got props or, mm -hmm. and then maybe reach forward, depending on what you want and where you are on this side of your body, you may want to walk your hands over a little bit more to the right and feel that lovely side stretch on the ribs and the left as you stretch to the right. And just breathe and sit here for a few breaths. And then gently just kind of roll back, lift that leg back over. If you want to bring it back up, just, you know, bend it, bring it up, maybe do a, a pump or two. Left. And then we'll move. If you want to wiggle around and re readjust, neutralize and tabletop again. And then press that right foot back, stretching the toes. Just enjoy this nice, extension and then fire up those glutes let's feel the right buttock all the way down the thigh and the calf and then with control lift that leg up so square hips and then maybe flex and point your feet and let's tap five with control so you keep everything active but you just tap down for three two keep the hips square keep the shoulders the energy across the chest five and hold it and then maybe bend and stack here in tabletop and wiggle the foot around good keep the core keep pressing that navel nice and feel the weight equally balanced on the hands and then bring that leg back up and, and reach up and then cross it under. Good, 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 good. And come in and just melt in here. Good. Ah, yes, finding whatever level of stretch, wherever you are, you just need it. Let the pose meet your body where you are. Finding a nice, healthy stretch. Don't push it. When we push ourselves one little minute, of overextending can cause literally years. It took me two years to heal from a, an injury. Yeah, just one minute in class trying to do something crazy. I, I didn't even, you know, split. I didn't even do that when I was a cheerleader. The full splits on both legs. <laughs> but I thought I could do it three years ago. <laughs> and I was for a while, but you know. Yeah. And then coming back up <laughs> and then just Bringing that leg, if you want to bring it back up again. And then come back into tabletop and wiggle out. And let's just work our hands around here. Something that's really good for, uh, for the wrists. And that's just walking the hands around, taking your time and just exploring how that feels. It should feel really lovely, just walking your hands around. Kind of like a cat, lifting up and pressing down, and coming around every which way, and then reversing, kind of like a clock in reverse clock. Noticing if there's anywhere that's a little tighter, that needs you to hang out a little more. That's what yoga's about, exploring. Where is my body today? And then coming back into tabletop, Let's just press our toes back this time. We've warmed them up in the arm leg, the, the leg balances, excuse me. So pressing back with the toes and then just sit back on them. So here we have reflexology. So it, it usually doesn't feel so great, but it'll feel good, great when we come out of it. But it's, it's super good for our feet because our toes are always going in this one direction and we wear these crazy shoes a lot, or at least we used to, so we're healing. So try to open up the chest, bring in that core again, lift your body up, maybe even reach up with hands. I like to take my left thumb over my right, put the hands together kind of in prayer, right? So as you reach up, tuck the hips in a little, feel the active core, and then drop the shoulders as you reach up with the arms. You got two, two things happening with the arms here, good. 
And you can look up or you can look straight or you can look down depending where your head is. And then gently coming through. It's also a nice distraction for the toes. <laughs> and lift the toes up and tap them out. Yeah. <laughs> ah, this should feel good. And then if you want to sit back down in a rock pose is, is one name for this. And let's just inhale the shoulders around and back and up, scrunch them and then around and down and then reverse. And then just maybe place the palms up, Mary closing your eyes and just nodding up and down, opening up the throat and the neck as if we're saying yes, yes to healing, yes to peace, yes to anything that lifts up our spirits. And then bringing the head to neutral, eyes still soft to close and then saying no, saying no to anything that does not bring us joy or uplift us or teach us lessons of positivity and health and wellness. And then from here, if you want to do some half circles, just if you're going back with your neck, make sure don't crunch your neck back. Those little bones are delicate. And then just roll from side to side, chest down, front, chin down in front of the chest, left to right. And then behind. And then just coming out of that, let's move into easy seated. So taking the fingers and remembering creating that space and strength. So core lifts the spine and with the spider fingers out, opens the chest. So have this be active. And then flip the hands and scoop up as if we've got some resistance. The air is very heavy. Pressing the shoulders down as you reach up. Nice, inhale, exhale, twist to the left. Oh. So every inhale lifts and straightens with core. Every exhale twists. Once you get that really good twist here, Mary, Roll your eyes around. So let's exercise those eye muscles. Very important. We're always turning our head. We forget to exercise our eyes. So this can support the vision. Remembering to straighten, remembering to twist, opening the shoulders, and then come back around. Good. Bring those fingers out again and flip and scoop, pressing shoulders down. Do this nice and slow. Beautiful, nice adjustment there. Coming together, reaching up. Nice inhale and then exhale, twist to the right. My back correct. <laughs> Just mindfully straightening and strengthening core, supporting the spine. Beautiful posture, open the chest lifting up, and then roll the eyes on the side. And coming back around. Beautiful. Let's place the hands on the knees. Straighten really well. Make sure you've got the core. We're going to do a little spinal flex. So ease into this. Just enjoy this. It really feels wonderful, especially when you just ease into it, exploring all of the different degrees as you move. It's coming out of the weekend, right? So I don't know how busy you were, what we did, but here's nice to kind of explore what's going on with your muscles as we move into the spinal flex. And then once you kind of figure out where you are, you can increase the speed. Just find what feels good to you. I love this one. It's so relaxing. It's wonderful for the lower back. It's great just to open up your, your spine and your full body. The next time you come around, 
from leaning back, just move it into a nice circle. Yeah, and again, take your time on this one, just exploring the different degrees where you are. Keep the core. It's a slow a few times. So we'll do one way a few times as you work through this and then we'll reverse. And whenever you're ready, you will reverse. And if you want to add some speed and just go back and forth at any of them, just letting this pose open you up, make it feel good. And then when you're ready, just come back in to Sukhasana and let's inhale arms up again, really stretch and reach, maybe, maybe wiggling a little bit, feeling how nice and open your body's become. Nice, beautiful. And then just come through prayer, just acknowledging that we choose peace and wellness, mindfulness in our yoga practice, mind, body, spirit, it's all connected to heart. And then just drag the front, press the fingers, spider fingers out, press forward as you lower with core. So just walk it out slowly here. Wiggling into this, breathing here as you open up, nice expansion for the ribs. Anytime we're opening your ribs, we're creating space for the digestive system. So let's get all that stuff out. Everything moves, creating a regular flow of releasing toxins. Walk the hands over to the left. So the left hand sweeps to the left, the right hand follows behind. Just exploring the points in between and lower here. Pressing both sit bones down, maybe spider fingers. Feel the right side really open here, lowering the torso. Is, it feels good, a slight challenge, but never anything that feels strange, stress. And then just maybe the left forearm goes down and you open up the torso and reach up and across with the right hand. So good, good. Just breathing here, opening torso. Maybe you feel the energy and the muscles move across those lymph nodes under your arm, creating breast health, opening lymph nodes to improve the yeah, detoxification. Now exhale, to torso down. And then sweep to the center to neutralize. Maybe you want to wiggle a little in the center before we move over to the other side. Right hand sweeps over, left hand follows, same thing, opposite side. And then the right hand goes down to support, reaching up and letting that left arm just shoot across. Good. Immune system support, the digestive system and all the movement and the breath. It's really, really good for the immune system. Exhale, torso down. The other thing that's amazing, sweeping to the center again for the immune system is the uh, parasympathetic nervous system that comes really in gentle yoga, nice and yin, the more relaxing ones. And then drag those fingers up. That's the parasympathetic nervous system is the one that lets the body function. The sympathetic is the one that everything shuts down and it's like escape, right? And we get stuck in that one with stress. So it's kind of wiggling through here and hands in front, Feet behind, come back in tabletop. This time we're gonna press all the way up on our knees. Let's see if you can see me. You see me okay? I can, I can see you fine. I'm gonna tilt mine a little bit. There. Okay. Yes. There you go. So we're gonna work into camel here. So we're gonna take it gentle. I have to get my bolster. Hang on, I can't get into camel without my bolster. Let me grab it. Yeah, 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 take your time. Just us. All 
All right. Okay. And what a beautiful porch. How nice to have yoga on your porch. <laughs> yeah, it is. I love that. I wish my wife, I would work on my porch. I, I'll have to call them and see because I've got a, a decent porch that could be fun. Placing your hands back. Jennifer calls it yoga pockets. I love that. So moving the elbows closer to each other. So the shoulders on these poses, the shoulders roll in, they rotate in, but then you can press your shoulder blades back and then just gently with core, lower. Don't crunch those bones in the back of your neck. So just be easy with yourself. And the first one here, just, you know, we'll do two, we'll do two or three. So just take it easy on this one, but just a lot of core. Really have to protect the back here. But back bends are so important because we're all, everything we do, it seems it's like our toes. It's all moving forward over a steering wheel, looking down the computer. Now you're pressing your hips forward and your thighs forward. See if you can lift the chest and open, roll the shoulder blades down. And with a lot of core, just gently come up out of this. Maybe you want to shake your arms out a little, your shoulders. Let's do it again. I don't know where you are. Sometimes I like to place my hands on my heels. So wherever you are, do another yoga pocket or find your bolster. But if you do any adjustment and you lose that, that then the hips and uh, thighs go back, then just press them back out once you find your place. And just gentle. Go through that body scan. Where's your core? protecting your lower back. Maybe active glutes. The glutes are really wonderful for supporting the back and strengthening the posture. Lifting the chest up, the shoulder blades coming together, but the, the shoulders are rolled forward. And lower a little more if you want. Maybe three more breaths here. Gently coming out of this slowly, let it core slow and sink back onto your heels. We're going to move into child's pose. It's a wonderful counter pose for this. So maybe opening your knees wide and just sliding in, wiggling down, nothing too fast. Just walking through, gently releasing into balasana. Ah, again, if you want to wiggle your hips or open your ribs up here just whatever feels good two more nice breaths here and then next inhale come on back up into tabletop we're gonna do a little cat cow cobra flow so Make sure that the core is in this. Inhaling, nice cow, exhale, cat. But bring the cat down into a child's. And then inhale. And you can break this up and just do whatever you want to depose through cobra, sliding up. Maybe hold cobra for a breath here. We can move into more of a flow, whatever you feel like. But we can take a couple of breaths through each pose. Come back into tabletop. Inhale and cow. Maybe an inhale and an exhale, just taking some time breaking this down. And then exhale or breath or two in cat. Pressing back into child's pose all the way. Ah. When you're ready for your next inhale, take it through, sliding through cobra forward, adjusting yourself, and then inhale, bring it up. Couple of breaths here. Really feel the strength in your arms, your biceps, your triceps, your upper body, and then just press lower down and then press through tabletop. Wiggle it out. Finding a nice cow. Nice, beautiful inhale. Exhale, maybe let the tongue out. And shake it out, cat. 
Another inhale, maybe in cow. And then exhale, cat, and push through. Piles. And then just do a couple of these on your own if you want to take it through your breath. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, through, cat, and down into velocina. And inhale. So just kind of cutting through a few things and moving through this in a flow. And after you do a couple of those, we'll just meet in Sphinx. Nice, gentle back bend here in Sphinx. So bringing the feet together, heels up, maybe feel some activation in your legs all the way up to glutes. Feel the belly active as you protect your lower back, pressing the shoulder blades down the back, open the shoulders. Glances slightly forward. I don't know if you thought of an intention, but maybe think of an intention or a personal mantra for the day this week. I will choose peace. I will choose compassion, starting with me. And then gently lower down, bringing your hands to your side. And we're going to move into locus. So we're doing some back work here. So inhale, maybe just bring the chest up and leave the feet and hands down. Just bring the chest up, looking up, and make sure the core is in this. And then lower down on one cheek, take a nice breath. And then next time, lift the hands and feet with the shoulders. Good. Locus, feel the shoulder blades move down the back. Feel the body energized. One more breath here. And lower down. Ah, other cheek. Mm. Next inhale, bring it up one more time. If you want to make it a little bit active, you can swim, opening legs and arms around. Swimming through movement or just holding this locust, hands in front or behind. And then exhale, come down, crocodile under your chin. Bring your feet up and just windshield wiper to release your back. This should feel wonderful. And then lowering the feet down, go ahead and let's roll over on our back. So, you go. So from here, let's bring our feet and fingers, arms all the way up like we're trying to tickle the sky and just wiggle your toes and your feet, maybe kind of flap them around. Lift each shoulder, right and left shoulder up and down. Get the core in this and just wiggling. Super good for digestive system. Okay, another one that's really good for the digestive system, you can bring the hands to the floor and just kicking your buttocks. And then just hugging yourself, a nice big hug, and then rock from side to side, massaging your spine. We're gonna do some more on the floor, but I wanna do a, so if you're rocking from side to side, that's a horizontal massage on the spine, really good for aligning, for back problems. Now place the hands under the thighs and rock and roll a little up and down. We're not gonna come out of it. We're just gonna give this a nice, it's wonderful for your back. I think it's so relaxing too. Good. It's fun. And then just come up and keep those legs up and bring the hands down to your side. Gonna do some core work. Good. So maybe on a count of uh, six or seven, just lower with core those legs together all the way down, pressing the sacrum into the floor, feel the glutes fired up. 
really active legs come all the way down reach up and stretch with the arms flex and point the feet bring lots of oxygen into the body beautiful hands to side now go ahead and lift that right leg up and with your hands you might just want to tell the muscles everything's okay rub them up and down the back of the leg and then just we're going to do this at the end and we'll do it at the beginning. You'll see how nice and open you are after we do this right side exercise. So just lift up your torso and just feel the activation. Just give your hamstrings some love. Just breathing here, exploring where you are, bringing the leg closer to the forehead. Just go where it feels a little bit challenging, but not dangerous. And then lower the torso down. And if you, I don't use a strap, but whatever prop you want, we're going to lower the leg to the, over to the right. So using your right hand, you can help hold it or lower it to the right side. And just breathe here with this nice opening. Left hand, maybe all the way out perpendicular to your body. Maybe your head is to the left. Bringing oxygen in. One more nice breath. And then with a lot of core, pressing hips down on the mat, helping to support with the right hand, the right leg coming all the way up. Straight up and then bring the right hand all the way out. Take the left hand and then help guide that leg over to the left side. So that right hip's gonna come up here. It was, uh, hips were down on the last one. So the right hip comes up a little bit here. But don't, you don't, you don't have to rock it all the way up. Try to, try to keep it from going too far up because you get a better stretch. And just breathe into this and explore just different degrees of movement so you can get where whichever muscles need the most attention today. So that's where the individual finds and the mindfulness helps you determine where it is you need to do more work. A couple more breaths here. Head should be perhaps to the right as the leg is to the left. Next, inhale, gently supporting that leg as it comes back up. Good. Now placing both hands behind the thigh and lift up and see where you are now. Chances are your legs are gonna come a whole lot closer. Do you notice? Yes. Isn't that good? Yeah. Love that. <laughs> and then just release your torso back down, let go of your hands. Just really fire up that leg and that glute. Really enjoy all the work you just did. And as it's fired up, just slowly lowering it down. You can point or flex your toes, whatever. Feels good. And once it's all the way down the mat, just feel the difference in the two legs as we prepare to work on that left side. So inhale and bring that left leg all the way up, placing hands, rubbing, calming that leg. And then gently with control, with core, lifting up. Don't push it here. We haven't warmed the side up. But just exploring where we are and telling your body it's okay. We're in dental yoga. This is good. Challenging, but calm. Lowering down, torso. Open up that right arm. Stretch it all the way across as you gently lower the left leg, assisted by the left hand to the side, keeping hips on the mat. And just breathe here as you open. Just stretch. Bring all that oxygen in so the muscles can use that oxygen to build. <sighs> I like to think of oxygen like water. You don't want to wait until you're thirsty. You don't want to wait until you're like, <gasps> right? You want to keep bringing oxygen into your body and keep giving your body water. If you, if you wait till you're thirsty, it's too late, right? You miss, you should be 
hydrating yourself along the way. So placing the hand underneath on your next inhale, slowly bringing up, press the sacrum against the mat as you lift up. Good. Bring the left arm all the way out, open the chest, right arm comes over to hold and support the left leg as you lower it. Don't let the hips go too far over. Just exploring. Hang out where you need to work through some stuff. Too many people, too many classes go from like zero to 100 and they miss all those different degrees and everybody has different degrees they need to work on and it all changes every day, every week. So we should be mindful of where our bodies are. And the teachers just give us instruction, direction. We become our guide. One more breath here. And then slowly, when you're ready, begin lifting that leg back up. Maybe you make it more active as you bring it up, placing the hands behind. And then just lift up and see where you are here on this side. Bringing your torso up, kneading the leg with lots of breath. And then lowering the torso, releasing the arms, really fire up their leg from the glutes, pressing the back, the sacrum into the floor, and then lower, really fire it up like a ballerina's leg, strong, stretching, lowering, down, ah. And then take a nice big stretch, hands overhead, flex and point feet, beautiful stretch. We're gonna do a little core, a little more core work here. So let's bring those uh, knees up and the arms out to the side so that the legs should be 90 degree angles and the palms, let's place them down and we're just going to slowly move legs from left to right, head goes the opposite direction. So we're getting a nice twist, but we're also getting some good core work in here. Feels wonderful on the sacrum too, and the hips. And then bring the legs up one more time. Placing hands down on the floor and lower slowly together. And we're gonna do this five times, just gently tap and then bring them back up. And then slow, bring them down. Gently tap the heels and come up. I think what, four more times? One. Two. Three, four, up. And when you're ready, placing your hands behind your thighs, getting that rock and roll position, just slowly moving. Yeah, into that. You really feel like you want to have some more fun. You can roll your feet back into a plow and just hold it. And then rock and roll, just playing. So your hands would be pressing on the mat, helping come into plow good. And then coming out of that and just rock and roll up into staff. Beautiful, Mary. Great job. Into staff. So wiggling in here. Feeling uh, pretty energized, right? Found our legs and lower body. So let's inhale and reach up here in staff. Press the shoulders down, lift the body up. Good, nice adjustment. And then on your exhale, we're gonna hinge first. So with a lot of core, protect your back. This is a forward fold. So before you fold, you're gonna hinge, okay? So maybe holding fingers or something and just Hinge. So working core, 
Really protect that lower back. You're gonna feel a nice stretch here. And you'll have a better fold when we enter it this way. And one more breath here. And then fold. Ah. See, the fold happens better and I think safer and you get a nicer stretch when you do the hinge first. So we're gonna hang out here for five or six full nice breath cycles. And then next inhale, gently coming up out of this. Bring, bring the feet up, lift the chest, and just from side to side. I always think that's a nice transition. And then let's just come up into a cobbler pose. So bringing the feet in close, you can do diamond shape or all the way up, lowering the knees down, lifting the chest. We will hinge and then fold, just take another couple of breaths here, lift the chest, bring in the core, press the shoulders down and back, and it's a lot going on. Good smile. <laughs> Good, <laughs> beautiful actually. And just hinging forward with core. <sighs> and from here, if you wanna just kind of bring your hands out and fold wherever you are, finding several breaths here. Then gently coming out of this. Let's open the legs up wide. We're a nice wide legged forward fold. I love this one. Then we'll move into pigeon. So straightening up, lift the chest, roll the shoulders back. Let's scoop up. Mm -hmm. Nice inhale, pressing shoulders down. A lot of core here, straighten and twist to the left and lower torso down slowly, touching shin or ankle or foot and just lowering here, finding. And as you breathe here and hang out here, you'll go a little lower, it's a little mini yin for And take the left arm on the inside of the left leg and bring the right arm over, extending this angle here. Mm -hmm. Another nice side opener. You can flex and point the toe if you want. Just enjoying your body. And then lower down, back torso down. See if you enjoy more fold and then gently walk the hands to the center and just hang on here for a few breaths in the center
and then gently just bringing your hands over, sweeping them over to the right side. Letting the right hand come on the inside of the right foot. Left arm comes over, opening up here. Mm -hmm. Keeping the core, but really feeling the opening on this side. Your digestive system will thank you. Your nervous system will thank you. Your immune system. It's, they're all thanking you. <laughs> One more breath here, thanking us. Minus two. And then lowering torso down. Enjoying nice lower position. And then just sweeping the hands back to the center. You're gonna you're gonna notice that you naturally come a little closer to the floor. You feel a lot more open. Just letting this set in. Letting the fascia expand here. <sighs> Wonderful way to start our Monday. Maybe your fingers walk out and you wiggle a little more. Keep the core, but just wiggling here. And then next inhale, slowly with core, drag the fingers up onto the thighs. Just really open up the chest, lift it up. Maybe bring the arms out, inhale, come up and reach. And then maybe bring the feet in back in together. <laughs> and come back through. Just one more little nice cobbler stretch here. And then come up, bring the knees together. And another one of those nice windshield wipers. So coming back into seated, let's go ahead and do another just quick stretch twist here. So inhale, hands up, exhale, twist to the right. Coming back around, scoop up, exhale, twist to the right. And let's come back into tabletop. So do you like, let, we'll do downward facing dog and then you can have your choice in which way you want to enter pigeon from down dog. I usually enter it through with down dog. You do? Yeah, down dog, I use down dog, yep. That's my, my favorite way too, but a lot of people like to do it on their backs. Okay, perfect. So pressing back on your toes, fingers really wide on your mat. Do we feel active? In this, pressing hands and toes, take a nice big breath. Inhaling, exhale, hips up. Ah, walk it out. Feeling nice stretches in the back of each leg as you press back, walking your dog. You want to just slide your feet from side to side, one and then the other. And let's open our legs up high, up wide, I mean, and just press into it. That's always kind of fun. I don't think we get to do enough of these. I think it's a bulldog. <laughs> and then just walk your feet back into a regular down dog. Let's inhale the right leg up, Mary, and just straight three-legged dog, hip square, bring the breath in, feel the expansion of the muscles up and down the left leg. Now bend and stack your hips and roll the ankle around, a lot of core here. 
and then bring that leg back up. So we're gonna work just a wee bit for this dog. So come up on your toes. A lot of core here, square your hips, bring that leg up. Exhale, knee to nose. Hold it, waving shoulders over wrists, hold it. Inhale, come back up. Three-legged dog. And now exhale to the right elbow, holding the knee there. And then gently let it slide all the way down to the wrist. And then just wiggle that back leg and adjust the front any way you need. Everybody's different in this pose, so don't, don't push it. Just find your challenge. Now, if you went all the way down at first, that's fine, but you may want to come back up and just do a little cascading before you melt down. So with this, just a lot of core. Open up the shoulders. Look up. Inhale. And then exhale. Stay looking up. So this is very graceful, like you're dancing with the movement. And then inhale, chin to chest and bring it up. Spider finger and all the way up. Look, bring the shoulders back, lift the chest. Exhale, looking up. Um, we're gonna do this and then bring the head down. Now chin to chest. Last one. Once you get up, then beautiful. And then gently, gracefully lowering down. Finding pigeon, we'll stay here for, let's say, I don't know, eight breaths or so. So you're doing the work in the yin poses when, you're, when nothing is tense. So just do a body scan and make sure everything is relaxed. Where are your hips? And then bring the oxygen into these areas that we're expanding. Feel the oxygen with every deep breath moving into the hips, into the thighs. Sinking in. One more inhale, one more breath, and then bring your next inhale, bring it all the way back up. Finding balance here. So we're gonna move toward a variation of mermaid, but just taking your time and exploring where you are. A lot of balance work here too. So make sure the core is in here and your hips are square and, and even. Reach out with the left hand, leave the core, I mean, keep the core keep the core and then turn the hand up and follow the fingers this is really good for our brain following the fingers around lifting the chest while we are just taking your time with this movement and then maybe tapping the thigh or the calf perhaps the back leg comes up and you hold the toes and bring them in maybe the foot comes into the elbow crease so wherever you are now let's reach the right hand and reach out Finding balance, good. And then if you wanna just scoop that around, waving at the back end or wherever you are, it's our journey. Every day, every step takes us onward in our journey. And then gently release, following right hand fingers down, releasing the left leg, follow left hand fingers all the way around and to the mat. Take the prop and just swap it to the other side. Get your nice grip on that mat again, taking our time. And those back toes, curl them in really firm on the mat. Square your hips, bring that core in and lift that leg up with control, right? So like a wing. And then inhale, bring it all the way up, three-legged dog. You might have to hop to get to your space, your place again, three-legged dog. Oh, open up here if you want to bend and stack, just Bringing that leg back. 
take it out, whatever, and then bring it down, maybe walk everything out again. <sighs> Next, inhale, bring that left leg up. Just exploring this. Now you're going to feel a lot of extension, expansion up and down the right leg as you lift this left leg up three legged dog. Hands firmly in the mat. Hips are square, and then bend and stack. If your hips open up, but your shoulders stay square, maybe move that ankle around. Keep opening, keep body scanning. Don't lose your core. Inhale, bring that leg back up. Now come up on your toes, a little work here. Exhale, shoulders over wrists, knee to nose, up. Inhale, bring it up, yeah. Exhale, shoulders over wrists, knee to left elbow. This time it's slowly lowering it to the mat and wiggle the back foot. And we're gonna repeat everything we did on the other side, including the cascading, just getting your prop fixed. And finding spider fingers and core, squaring yourself, balancing yourself, inhale. And exhale, grace and beauty, <sighs> smiling. Inhale, bring it up. We're gonna do this two more times. <sighs> Lift the chest with the inhale, exhale, lowering down. Last one, chin and chest. All the way up in gratitude, lifting the chest to God, exhale and melt in your pose, finding your pigeon. Body scanning, making sure that all of the tension is gone. Let the fascia expand. You're doing the work when you're melting and you're releasing. It can't expand if you're tense, so let that go. Two more breaths. Next inhale, gently rising up. Finding your balance here. Same thing on this side, reaching out with the right hand. And inhale, bringing it around, following the fingers. Finding the calf, the leg, the foot. Looking at the left hand, reaching out when you're ready. Take your time. So just holding your toes or your ankle, just getting used to the balance on this side. That's really the biggest part of it is just finding your balance on here. And then maybe bring the left hand out and reach once she has some balance holding the ankle or the shin. <laughs> it takes a minute. I can't do this side. It, each side is different. Can you, can you hold your uh, shin? I can. You can? Yes, I can do that. Okay, hold the shin and then reach out with the left hand. <laughs> <I can't> no. <laughs> okay. Not on this side. 
hey, we've got to laugh and try, right? Okay, so then lower the leg and reach back and just make that leg really active on the floor and reach back, a lot of core, and reach back and just tap the calf and then reach out, good. So, and you might even hold your balance by just having your hand on your thigh and, and gripping so that you've got, yeah, there you go. Just teaching your body this pose and then every day gets easier. Just find, meet it where you are, that's good, that's great. And then gently bring the left hand down, look back at the right hand and come around. Yeah, just find where you where you can start moving in this, and then your body's like, oh, okay, that's it, it's all good. That's how I learned Velocima squat. That was so hard for me. I couldn't get on my favorite feet. pose in the world. <laughs> yeah, I love it now, but it's just like, so I finally said, you know what, I'm gonna stop trying to go from zero to 100, and I'm just gonna meet it at 20 and 30, and you know, it took me a while, and then I got it. So that's, that's how, you, how you do it. Now bringing hands in firm on the mat, a lot of core, lift that wing up <laughs> and inhale, bring the leg up. Oh yeah, this side was needed some, some love. Shake it out, anything you wanna do, if you wanna stack again and lower the foot, walking out your downward facing dog. Let's do a couple of turbos before we kind of wind out of this into Shavasana. So bring those knees close in, close to the mat. A lot of core here. Exhale, ah, inhale, bring up close. Exhale, out, press, inhale, close. Exhale, out, press down. Maybe you're finding your heels closer to the mat here. It's a nice one to, and then just a couple of breaths here. Nice big inhale and then a collie breath. Ah, shake it all out, your head, everything. And then just come down hands and knees, and let's wind our way back onto our backs. We'll do a little bridge. You can make it supported or a regular bridge, and then happy baby and Shavasana. So I wanted to make sure and do some extra time because I, I, if you're good with it, just a, a few more minutes. Sure. Because <laughs> we started a couple minutes late, so this is good. Now, in bridge, I'm gonna support it because it's, it's Monday and my sacrum just, doesn't want to work that hard. So um, so any way you want bridge, if you're going into it, or you can mix it up, but uh, your fingertips should be grazing your heels. Your knees should be about hip width apart, feet hip width apart. So if you come into it regular style, I'll just do it for a bit. Then clasp your hands under your hips, wiggle those shoulder blades in, really feel the chest rise, inhale, bring it up. I like to really get my glutes in this. Lift the hips up. Feel like you're pressing your knees together a little bit as if you had a block in between or put a block in between. Just don't look from side to side, protect your neck. So a few breaths here. And then when you're ready to come down, you'll lift your heels and come down one vertebrae at a time. So do a couple of those or just hang out and support a bridge. And then when you're ready to come out of this, we'll come, we'll do happy baby. So pressing sacrum down the mat. Feel like your whole back is just rolled out on the mat from above your shoulder blades, shoulder blades on the mat, a lot of core, grabbing the outside of your feet, your arms are on the inside. And see if you can bring your knees a little closer to the mat. And then rock from side to side. So now have to just have some fun. Get that nice massage on your back in. And then whenever you're ready, just give yourself a nice big hug. Apanasana, wiggle around, any more rocking you want to do, and then gently just lowering your whole body onto the mat, bring your arms over your head before Shavasana, reaching up, stretching, flex and point your feet, 
And now tense up your body, just really, really tense. Make fists with your hands, feel the whole body tense, 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 and then bring your hands to your side and just melt. And the last thing, let the toes, the big toes come together, maybe touch, and then flop out. So you should be completely relaxed now. If there's any blanket or anything else that you need, but just taking two nice, big, Deep inhale, exhales, and then find your natural breath cycle, closing your eyes, revisiting your intention, and giving compassion to yourself in Shavasana. Feeling the breath return to your body. Nice big inhale, and exhale. Feel the tingling return to fingers and toes as you just start wiggling them. Next breath, bring your hands back over your head and take a nice big body, full body stretch. And bring those knees into your chest, giving yourself another big hug. Rock from side to side and roll over to whichever side of choice for two more nice breaths in fetal position. And when you're ready, place your hands and gently support yourself coming up. Hands in prayer. I want to thank you. This was wonderful. I, I think I needed this as much as you did. <laughs> it was a great practice, Missy. Really good. Thank you so much, dear. I look forward to working again. Let's inhale and bring hands all the way up, pressing shoulders down, reaching up. Feel that core, too. And exhale, hand to prayer. Ah, peace, Om Shanti. Hands into heart center. Namaste.